Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are going to talk about recession proofing your online business. Now, I know that I'm not a crazy naysayer and I'm not a doomsday kind of person, but amid this COVID crisis and the nation and the globe really being shut down for a long period of time, longer than any economy has really ever been shut down. Down. Um, I know that we're going to go through a little bit of a recession. A lot of the financial gurus in the world are talking about we're headed into a recession and that does not mean that we're all going to go out of business and all is going to be terrible. But it, what it does mean is that we need to make adjustments to what we're doing as business owners, as sellers. We know this is coming. We know that this has the potential to come. And guess what? If it's not as bad as we thought, if it's not as bad as we prepared for it, then we're even more prepared. But if it is, then we've got ourselves a way to be able to prepare ahead of time. So is there a recession right this second? A little bit, yes, as the, comp as the country is... Um, starting to reopen in some places with the virus going away and things like that, um, there's definitely been a downturn because there's a, a domino effect, if you will. So the economy is shut down. Everybody's, you know, a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people are where have been stay at home, quarantined, not able to go out to restaurants, not able to travel, not able to do all the regular things that they need or want to do. And some people are even in a position where their entire income has been stripped from them for the past six weeks, two months, however long it's been in your area. And that does have residual effects on the economy. And so what do we need to do as business owners, specifically product-based business owners, Amazon, eBay, e-commerce, all the different things and places that we're all selling, what can we do to prepare ourselves for the upcoming and continual downturn of the economy? So before we freak out, I want to give you some facts that I've been doing a lot of research on this because I think it's a super important topic to talk about. It's important to talk about this because we don't want to live with our head in the sand. We don't want to think and sit here and think that, oh, as soon as quarantine is lifted, and a lot of us are out of quarantine by now, but once it's lifted nationwide, worldwide, whatever, everything's just going to get back to normal. The reality is it's not. There's a lot of people and a lot of companies and a lot of things that are going to change um, just naturally. For example, big companies out there are going to realize that they've laid off a lot of their workers and realize that they might have been dispensable. And no one likes to hear that. No one likes to hear that they've been laid off and then, oh, by the way, we really realized we didn't need you and you were just a, a liability instead of an asset. So you're now permanently unemployed. God forbid that that happens, but I'm just trying to be realistic and you guys know it's a tough love thing because I'm preparing you right now what to do for the long term for your business. Whether this is your permanent business or a side hustle or something you're just considering starting to do online, there is hope. But with, with the negative things that are going on, we need to be aware and acknowledge them so that we can move towards what can we do to prepare so that in a situation like this, we can recession proof. Now, don't quote me on that. I'm not going to make any promises to you as far as recession proofing, but these are strategies. Guess what? Recessions, there's nothing new under the sun. We've had many, many recessions over years and years. I mean, my dad used to talk about one when I was real young and I was born in 1980. Yes, 1980. Um, but, you know, there's been many. There was one that's the, the recession of 2008 is when we actually lost our home to foreclosure. And so I know a little bit about recession and the effects of these things, but also how to build yourself up and build your business up so that you're recession proofing yourself, your income, your business. And so these are some things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to prepare, what you can do to shift what you're selling, where to sell, how to sell these specific products, because you don't just have to stick to one platform. And so we'll talk about how diversification is going to help you when it comes to recession proofing. So First, if you have more questions, if you're not part of our community, I want you to join the Mommy Income Facebook group. It's the Amazon Files Mommy Income, mommyincome.com slash join. You need a code word because we don't like crazy spammers and we want to know that you're really interested in online business, Amazon, reselling, things like that. So recession proof is your code word to get into the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join. And you can join the Facebook group there, answer a few questions, include your code word 
don't forget, everyone says, I don't have a code word. Yes, you do. Every single episode of this podcast has a code word. Almost everything um, that you can find code words on our website, you can find code words everywhere. So if you come to our group and you haven't gotten a code word, then go find one. There is one out there. Um, and this is your code word for today. Okay, so CNBC said Americans cut spending by one third in the last recession between 2008 and 2012. This report was done in 2014, and they reported that Americans had cut their spending by a third. Now, what's good news about that is that they're still spending two thirds of their money. And of course, yes, there's housing and things like that. And we'll talk about how people spend their money during recessions and why and what you can do about it as a business owner, because we all are still in the business of making money and we're still spending money, but it just shifts a little bit. And then Forbes says that they increase their spending. They, meaning people during times of recession, increase their spending on experiences. So they're looking for things that last, like instead of buying a bunch of new clothes or jewelry or shoes or things like that, they're looking for memories. They're buying memories. And so there's definitely some products that we can talk about that are going to lead you there. But first, I want to talk about how to prepare yourself for a bit a recession, how to prepare your business and your things like that. So first and foremost, cash is king during a recession. Why? Because generally speaking, interest rates start to climb, interest rates on credit cards, interest rates on loans, interest rates everywhere during a recession, there's this imbalance. Also inflation increases and so we're paying more and getting less. So cash is king. The second thing about that is paying off debts. So if you have any credit card debt right now, business credit cards, you know, we're, we'll leave personal finance aside right now, although all these things apply to personal finance as well, but I am not your financial advisor but I do know a thing about a thing and I will tell you that cash is always a good thing to have having cash flow in your business if you um, I know some people during this COVID crisis where um, they had everything maxed out on credit cards they had all their inventory on credit cards they didn't have a way to pay it back and all of a sudden their sales completely halted because of what Amazon was doing number one they had all their eggs in one basket which is never a good idea and then two they also had it all tied up in debt well guess what that bill does not stop coming in even if your income does. So you need to be aware that paying off debt and running a cash-based business will give you number one, freedom, because then you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders if something does happen and say, oh, well, I paid cash for all in my inventory. And if all else fails, I don't have any bills to pay. I don't have any debts to pay. And so I can cut expenses, which is the next thing of how you prepare for a recession is cut costs. Now I could do an entire episode and y'all can, can email me if you want me to do a whole episode about um, how to cut spending and cut costs. You would be surprised how many things you're overpaying for right now. And I don't mean frivolous things, extra things. Of course you can cut subscriptions and different things like that, which is the, the number one thing I recommend that you do is look for things that are the most valuable to you and look at your bank statements, your credit card statements and cut little things that you don't think matters. Maybe you signed up for Hulu and you realize that you watched one, one or two shows during quarantine and now you don't need it yet. Your credit card is now being charged however much dollars a month for your Hulu subscription or whatever. If you jumped on the Disney Plus and you don't use it, um, why not? We love Disney Plus over here. It is one of the best $6.99 you'll ever spend in a month or whatever. And, um, but if you're not using it and you signed up for it, just cancel it. Guess what? Unless it's obsolete, which most things aren't that you're subscribing to, you can always sign up again. Every company is usually doing promotions a couple times a year. Don't have the fear that that tool, software, subscription thing, whatever, won't be there. Now, not something that you're using all the time. This is where you need to manage your priorities and say, I'm really not going to the gym. Let's be honest. I'm spending a hundred and some dollars a month, or even it's, if it's your lifetime or your, what is it? Planet fitness or something that does like 19 bucks a month or something like that. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. And in a, in a recession time, cut your costs. If you're not going to the gym and you're not even going once, cut the $20. They, they'll be right there when you want to re-sign up again for the same $20. So save yourself some time if you're not. I like to be outside in the summer. I don't love being in the gym when it's summertime. So if it's something like that, then maybe use it as a seasonal winter summer thing. So think about your costs and your expenses. And guys, this is what billionaires do. If you look at like, if you've ever guys have ever read anything by Warren Buffett, or you've ever learned anything about that guy, the probably the richest man on earth or something, I don't know. 
at least in America, he's got billions and billions of dollars. But the way that that they spend money, billionaires, millionaires, people we want to be like, right, um, is so different than what we would expect. You would think they'd be balling out of control and, you know, making it rain with their money piles and everything else. No, they're usually pretty frugal. And the reason they got to be billionaires is because they're very smart with their money. You don't have to have a lot of money to be smart with it. That's how you get a lot of money is by being smart with what you've got now. So, um, you know, thinking about these things, ca having cash, having a cash flow based business, cutting some costs of unnecessary things. You know, if you've got five things that you can keep in your business or less that you can pay for re recurring payments or like yearly annual subscriptions, that's another way to save money too, is to sign up for an annual plan. Usually you save a couple months of money. I know we do that in our membership group, the hub, Amazon files um, hub. We do like an annual membership so you can save almost um, three months worth of membership fees because you're paying annually. So that's another way to save money uh, in the long run. And so every little bit counts. Every little bit helps. Another thing you can do to prepare for an upcoming recession or a downturn or, you know, lower sales or whatever is to educate yourself. This is a perfect time to learn another platform, learn another way that you could earn an income on the side, just as a small way to contribute to what you're doing. I'm doing this right now, as a matter of fact. Yes, y'all know that I've already self-published my book, Dream Big, Step Small, buy it on Amazon. Um, but in that process, I've also learned that I have this tool at my disposal. I can write books, design covers, and offer them up on Amazon for zero money. So. When I say zero money, it literally costs nothing to write an ebook and upload it to Amazon. You have to follow all the rules. You have to know the protocol. There's, whole, there's some training involved in that, which I'm working on with uh, collaborating with someone as we speak. So stay tuned. But, what, but it's an asset at your disposal. If you learn how to do it and you just do it once to learn, to break even, upload a children's book or upload something that's um, a journal with lines or some blank pages. There's rules about blank pages. But if you've got a Kindle, a, a, <laughs> excuse me, if you have a Kindle Direct Publishing KDP account, it's free to have. You can sign up with your normal Amazon seller account or you can sign up with another account. It doesn't matter. They're not linked. So it's not the same as having an Amazon seller account. But if you have this and you can upload um, things for free. Maybe if you're not a designer, you can have a cover designed on Fiverr or Upwork or any other um, freelancing place out there. And you can start creating your own content or your materials. Now, you don't necessarily want that's not your mainstream of income, but what if you can make $50 a month on that? $50 a month pays for some of your subscriptions. $50 a month pays for inventory lab. So what if you could sell, you could create a book or two or eBooks or journals or something like that on KDP and you sell $50 worth a month. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but then if you think about paying $50 a month for inventory lab, now you're basically breaking even on that. So you do the work once and then it pays you over time. Now we all know, set it and forget it. It's not always the, the, that's not always reality. And I'm not saying that's reality here. I'm just saying that it's a possibility to set something up like once, like my book, once I uploaded my book to Amazon, when you guys all order, I don't do anything since then. I haven't done anything since then, except occasionally update the listing, make sure all the keywords are there. I check on it just like my Amazon listings, but it's a upload. And now this book lives here forever. And if y'all want to buy it, you can go buy it. Same thing with you. If you upload a journal, if you upload people doing devotionals, things for kids, like there's st the sky's the limit on what you can create and put on um, KDP. So learning another platform, educating yourself, take a course if you have to, um, something like that to teach you something else. This is leads into my last preparation, diversification. I cannot say this enough. Now I say this because diversify. Everybody has heard this in their entire lives. If you haven't, welcome to 2020. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, I put most of my eggs in the Amazon basket for sure. Why? Because it's my main source of income. However, I have other sources of income for a reason. The average millionaire, millionaire being your net worth is worth millions or more, has six or more income streams on a regular basis. 
And you know that person doesn't have six jobs, right? So it's not, it's income that they're setting up to pay themselves, making your money work for you. You put, do the work once and have it pay you. Now we can talk also, also about passive income and how it's not so passive because let's be real, it's not. But diversifying, selling on multiple platforms, selling a wide variety of products and services and selling things everywhere, doing different business models and different business opportunities. Why? Because if one cuts off for a time or shuts down for a time or forever, that you still have a way to make money and you don't have to pivot instantly. And it doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, the sky is falling and what am I going to do? We've all been in those situations, me too, and I never ever want to go back there. So since the crash of 08 and when we lost our house in 2012 and all these different things, I've decided since then that it, debt is the enemy and income streams are the goal. So how many income streams can I have on a regular basis to constantly keep cash flow coming in, regardless if this shuts down, if that shuts down. If my husband loses his job, I have my business. If I lose my business, he has this job, but I also have a savings that's earning compound interest and I have an eBay store and an Amazon store and I'm selling different places and I've created online courses and I have a book. That doesn't mean you have to do all those things, but thinking about what's going to create income for you that can create it even if one of them falls off so that you spread your eggs out a little bit more and diversifying by selling on multiple platforms is key. There is software for this, but there's also really easy ways to just list certain things in certain places. Being organized helps, but also just there's Joe Lister that can list your Amazon stuff on eBay. There's Cross List It, which can list your eBay stuff on Mercari and Poshmark and uh, all these other places too. So there's lots of different softwares that can help you automate some of these things as well. So you're not doing the work over and over and again. There's also this magical thing called outsourcing, hiring somebody to do some of the work for you. So you're making money off them and you're not even doing anything. Hello, this is what companies do. If you work at a nine to five, that's what you're doing. Somebody who owns that business outsourced something to you. So you work, they pay you a wage, but then they're making money for what you're doing. Do you like that? How does that sit with you? Just think about it for a second. The work that you do for someone else gives them money. Yes, it gives you money too. And it's a great way to be employed. If that's something that you like and want to do and you love that, great. You don't, there's, there's people like my husband, like would never want the responsibility of a business. He's like, I want to go to my job site, do my job, do it seven to three and come home and be done. I don't want to think about construction. I don't want to do it after that. I don't want to run a business. I don't want to be in charge. Great. For me, I never liked the fact that I was earning a paycheck and putting bigger money in someone else's pocket. So instead, I decided I've got to own my own business so that all of my efforts are mine to keep. So thinking about that. Okay, last thing to do to prepare yourself for um, the recession is your mindset. Remember that mindsets shift. The way people think about things and money and spending and experiences and all those things change. When spending is reduced, people still don't want to be bored. They, they're not just going to sit around and watch TV or watch the grass grow because they don't have a lot of money. Instead, they don't stop doing things. They just shift what they're doing. And so remember that although people are reducing spending, they're reducing spending on certain things and they're still spending on other things. So that's what we're going to talk about next. What to sell during a recession. So all these studies have shown, um, I, Forbes and uh, CSNBC and these different things that I've quoted in here have talked about people looking for experiences. Travel still happens during a recession. I don't even know about a pandemic. I know a lot of younger people have been talking about, hey, flights are super cheap. Let's go to, you know, some tropical vacation. Like if you're willing to travel, airlines are still open and so are hotels and so are things. It's just a matter of if you're risking your health or not. Some people care, some people don't, but people are still looking for experiences. They want to spend their money on memories. Instead of a 10 day vacation to Fiji, people go camping or they go uh, staycations. They go a little bit more local, but they're still spending money on traveling or on leisure activities. So camping, camping was a big thing. So when the recession and, and the 
to 2008 hit, camping gear and outdoor gear took a huge, it had a huge spike in sales because the people that maybe were spending thousands going to Fiji or Jamaica, I mean, we went to Jamaica last year and Puerto Rico a few months ago, and we love to travel, especially extravagant, tropical, all-inclusive vacations. <laughs> no shame. I love that. I'm going to be honest. But during a recession, we wouldn't spend our, our money on that. But that doesn't mean we wouldn't go somewhere. We might go on a local weekend getaway that's not flying or spending a lot of money on that. But we would still want to do things. So camping gear and outdoor gear and accessories and RV stuff and things like that sell really well during a recession because people shift from these big extravagant vacations to maybe a smaller, less expensive, more um more of a residual kind of, hey, if we buy an RV or buy some of these camping gear, we can use it over and over. We don't have to pay for flights and hotels. And so camping gear is a big deal. Also outdoor gear. When I say outdoor, I mean things to do outside. Like um, hammocking is a big deal for some of the younger people and maybe some outdoorsy type people. It's a hammock you can fit in this little pouch about this big. Um, and people go backpacking and hiking because it's a pretty inexpensive way to have experience, to get outside, to do things like that. So camping gear, outdoor gear, and accessories, the smaller things that go with this. So people might not want to spend $500 on something, but they might spend $50 to $100 on, the, on something a little less pricey. So those middle of the road brands do really well. But you would think luxury brands wouldn't do well, right? This is where the mindset of your customer comes in. So there are two sides of this coin. There are cheap, thrifty, I hate the word cheap. That's not the word I want to use. Frugal, thrifty, money wise, penny wise type people who want to get, you know, the best deal and they'll buy a cheaper item just because, hey, this is the money I have to spend on it. And then there's the luxury people that say, it, my, my husband is one of these, that you get what you pay for. So if I buy the best top of the line, most expensive thing, it will last me forever or for a lot longer than this cheaper one. So six to one, half a dozen to the other, depending on what camp you're on. But either way, those people are still spending. They might just be reducing some of the stuff that they're spending. So another thing that goes well is fishing gear and a fishing accessories. People sometimes use this for their livelihood. It's also a hobby. It's also something that's pretty inexpensive to do. Well, it depends on what kind of fishing you're doing. I know my husband has thousands of dollars of fishing stuff and boats and things, but it's an outdoorsy thing. It's not as expensive as some other hobbies out there. So, you know, kind of pick your poison. Sporting goods and supplies, second hand. So think about this in local markets. Sporting goods, things like, um, it's really, it's an experience. It's inexpensive to buy rollerblades or to do, um, you know, and a lot of younger kids are, do skateboarding, skateboarding and things like that. Your kids still want things to do in a recession. That doesn't mean you have to go to Legoland or Disney World. Sometimes it's a little bit more local and a little bit more of a small confined things picnics start to pick up during um, recession times because people want to pack their own food, but they want to have an experience. So think about experiences and how you can build products and bundles around experiences. Auto parts. So what else to sell during a recession? You sell auto parts and auto accessories. Here's why. Go back to that mindset again. People are trying to preserve what they already have instead of buying new. So maybe people that have, you know, considered buying a new car, or leasing a new car, and a recession hits, and they're like, ah, oh, well, the money's not really there, the price of cars has gone up, or interest rates are high, so instead, I'm just going to fix up my old, my car. I'm going to, you know, get new floor mats. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to, you know, upgrade. I'm going to do a an oil change from home, whatever it is, people are trying to preserve what they already have, not try to consume more. So this also spills over into home improvements. A lot of people start working on their house and do house projects and a little bit of home decor because maybe they're stuck at home a little bit more. Hello, quarantine. As so many people remodeled their inside and their decorations in their house because that's all they did was sit around and look at the walls going, that picture really is from like 1982. Perhaps we should update it. So a lot of home decor has really gone up in price and also in, um, volume because people were sitting around looking at their walls going, I really need to upgrade this. So that's another thing that people are, that they are constantly moving things around and with trends cha changing all the time. 
it's really helpful to have um, some home improvement stuff. And also, when I say home improvement, not just decor. I mean, people are doing projects. They're redoing their decks, they're power washing, they're perhaps changing or updating the material on their patio furniture, um, things that they can do yourself to save money. That leads me to my next one, things that save money, right? So <laughs> I laugh at this sometimes because I tried this once and literally it cost me more money than it was supposed to save me, <laughs> but whatever. We see these ideas on Pinterest, right? And they were just like, yeah, I'm going to try that. And it it's a complete disaster. I could probably do a whole episode on that and how many things I've tried that have, have been like, Pinterest makes it look so pretty and I do it really crappy. But the reality is that do it yourself type items. Like I remember like this, the, re the one I'm talking about is the laundry soap. So it's like, oh my gosh, you could save thousands of years, uh, thousands of years, thousands of dollars a year making your own laundry detergent. And it doesn't have to have all these harsh chemicals and this and that and the other thing. And I, first of all, I couldn't find some of the, the ingredients and I had to buy all this stuff. And then I had to buy a new container to put it in and then mix it all up. And then I made it and it made my clothes, like I did something wrong, I swear. Cause it made my clothes like all, it had this white film and it was kind of crusty looking. And I was like, okay, that's not gonna work. Could it have saved me thousands of dollars? Eventually, yes. But these are the things that people start doing during recession times. They look for ways to save money in the long term. And so they're making their own laundry detergent or they're um, switching to greener products that have less waste, which means they might have to make and prepare their own type things. I know people who use their own household cleaners with vinegar and lemon and water and some other different types of cleaners, like non-abrasives and non-chemicals and things like that. And they, they do great the supplies for those things still need to be available. That's where you come in. That's where you can come in and sell the supplies for these. Where do you find these ideas? Pinterest, Google, do it yourself type of uh, YouTube. I mean, there's so many DIYs on YouTube. People do DIY videos on YouTube and then they sell the plans. So my husband has bought these. Cause so I'm like, oh, can you make me these above ground planters? Here's the bit YouTube video and here's the plans for 9.99. I mean, if you have the ability to create something like that, great. Like that's something that you can do. So think these are bundle ideas. These are things to sell that people will be buying during like low recession times. Buy the supplies, make the kits, make the, make the sales with that. Um, another thing is storage products and organization stuff. So during the storage and organization, if people are a little bit home a little bit more because they're not going out to all these vacations or spending a lot of money um, on other things, they're looking to, again, preserve what they have, organize what they have, and buying storage containers and products and things like that. I love storage containers, you guys. I probably have an issue. Like, I'm not really even that organized. I just like want, I'm a wannabe. And so I have like bins and boxes and things like that. And when I'm at yard sales, I pick this stuff up all the time. But now it's really becoming useful because I have these things. I actually have like a bin of bins. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. I should take a picture of it and show you guys. Um, it's later like my bin of all the different storage baskets and containers and different things, but I use it all the time for all kinds of different things. When my daughter got into Legos, oh, it was a godsend that I had all these things around because she had these Lego sets and then she doesn't like to build according to the directions. She likes to free build. So she wants to sort them by color and all this stuff. Having all kinds of extra little bins and, and boxes and storage containers were great for that. What else do people buy during recession time? Small appliances and cooking items. So although this seems a little bit crazy, one of the things that people do to think that they're going to save a lot of money, which actually does save a lot of money, is eat more at home. So, you know, restaurants are great and they're experiential and you love to have someone serve you and cook your food, but during recession, $100 on dinner might be a big stretch. So instead, people are spending that money, that same money, one time on, let's say, an air fryer or a new microwave or a new set of cookware or some new ingredients for healthier cooking at home. And when they do, or instant, instant pot, they spend money on that knowing it's a long-term purchase and it will keep going to where if you spend $100 on dinner, you had a great dinner, had a great experience, but that money's now gone. So people shift to starting to cook more things and prepare more things at home and small kitchen appliances. Now, this can be wholesale, this can be new, this can be used. The best places, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment here, is where to sell 
all of these things because different marketplaces lend themselves to different types of products. So, but these are great use. You can pick them up at yard sales. You can pick them up at thrift stores. You might have some laying around your house. Um, look for damaged or ding boxes. This is where liquidation might come in, where liquidation is not recommended for Amazon. But if you buy liquidation pallets, a lot of them, the boxes are damaged or they've been opened, but they're not actually defective or broken. They just have damaged boxes plenty of places to sell these things um, besides Amazon. If it's brand new in the box, sell it on Amazon. Even if it's used, you can sell it on Amazon, but there are some you know, way, different ways to sell those things. And then generic type items. So I talk about generic items all the time. Most of my wholesale bundles right now are generic type items that don't have brand names that you would never recognize, but it's people things that people need and buy every single day. So I joke about tarps and bungee cords. <laughs> I'm married to someone of a redneck, right? So we have tarps and bungee cords all over the place. But do I know brand names of all these tarps and bungee cords? No, I just know add it to the Amazon cart because those are things we need. Or like things like a ruler or things like paper clips or these paper holder here. Like these things don't have brand names. A lot of people think you've got to sell brand name items to make a living. You don't. Generic, more useful everyday items, making bundles out of those things. And this is just really, those are just a, just a small list of things you can get started trying to look for to start making sales um, for a recession type time. But this is also a great time to flip things into thrift. And when I say flip, I mean, you know, like, you know, it's on my bucket list to flip a house. <laughs> it's a great time to flip a house during a recession if you have the funds to hold the house because housing market's down, there's some foreclosures you can buy, you can buy them, or you can buy a fixer up or fix it up, sell it later on, but you have to wait for the market to come back up. The same type of thing applies to thrifting goods. So if you're thrifting or flipping goods, if you have the capital and the cash, which I hope you do, if you don't, start saving for it now because you can flip things that people are willing to sell in a pinch. So if people are are in a pinch and they're, they've lost their job, they've lost their income, they're hitting a recession, they, they need some fast cash. They're gonna sell the extra cars, the extra vehicles, the extra what I call boy toys, um, quads, SUV, or ATVs, um, motorcycles, you know, all those kind of things that are sitting around that people like to, you know, luxury, extra fun, leisure type items. And so this is something often people start selling off their assets. They're not going to sell their house to pay their house payment. They're going to sell the boat. They're going to sell the motorcycle. And although that seems very sad for some people to be like, oh, someone has to sell their motorcycle to pay their mortgage. So be it. That's fine. But as business owners, this is a time where we need to be prepared to capitalize on buy low and sell high. That's what we do in product-based businesses. That's what Walmart does. That's what Amazon does. That's what every single store in the universe does. They buy items for a lower price, put a markup on it, and sell it to you for a little bit more. You're doing that, only you're just creating your own platform. Instead of being walmart.com, you're your name of your store. So regardless, this is a good time to take advantage. And I don't mean taking advantage of people and being shady. I mean, it's a good time to take advantage of the market because the market is going to start selling off these things. And if you're the one that can swoop in and buy it for a cheap price, hang on to it for a few months and then flip it when the economy gets better, guess who's cha-ching bringing in the money the rest of the time. So thinking about these things, people are looking to sell things to make their rent. So buy cheap and hold on to stuff. Bigger ticket items, more expensive items if you can. Look for some of these things, but same on a smaller scale. So if someone's ditching a coach purse for five bucks somewhere and you can hold on to it for a couple months and then flip it on Posh or somewhere else, you're making a killing. So be prepared now. Start putting that money away so that you can cash in on this when it happens because it will happen. Okay, let's talk about where you sell all these different things that we're talking about. Different marketplaces lend themselves to different things. Where to sell large bulky items. You know, we're talking about um, things you wouldn't want to ship. I mean, if you're someone selling, you know, water skis, <laughs> it's not exactly easy to package and ship. So let go, offer up Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace, depending on your area, 
is becoming more and more of a big thing. There's a lot of different ways to start selling things. They even have shipping now, which is you could set yourself up to do some shipping. Um, so if somebody wants to buy your item that doesn't live near you, then you can actually ship it to them. So there's an option on Facebook Marketplace now to be able to offer shipping. Things like furniture. If you're upgrading your furniture, oh, so many people do this. I've heard my mom say this. I've heard my husband say this. I've heard kids say this. Everywhere else, you guys have no idea what people will pay money for. Like my old couch that I thought no one would care about, no one wants this. I mean, it, it could it, clean it up. Okay, great. But like literally this couch is so old, I'm getting rid of it. No one's going to want this. I'm just going to throw it in the garbage. One man's trash is another man's treasure. For a 20 year old struggling teenage kid, almost a almost grown adult kid trying to move out, any couch is a couch. And if it's $50, they're gonna pick up that $50 couch, they'll find a way to get it because they have nothing right now. I've learned this. So literally, I struggle to throw anything away. I donate a lot of stuff, I don't sell everything, but I am a seller. I cannot help myself. Can I get an amen from somebody somebody out there who is like me that literally cannot just like, I have, I feel like I have to sell everything. I'm like I can just give this away. It's $50. Someone's going to buy this couch for 50 bucks. My husband's like, get rid of it. Just who cares? And I'm like, no, sell it. Like, I just can't help it. It's just part of my brain and how I think. And it's not because I need or want so much money. I just feel like things have value. And just because this couch that I've had for 10 years has no longer has value to me, to somebody else who only has $50 to spend on a couch that's cheaper than any Goodwill or Salvation Army or probably garage sale you're gonna find out there. But 50 bucks is 50 bucks. And so if I can get rid of a couch that someone's gonna actually pick up from my house and take away, that I don't have to do any work except list it on Facebook Marketplace and collect $50, I am in. That is just how I roll. So. Facebook Marketplace, let go, offer up for furniture, big, large, bulky, sporting equipment, camping equipment, things like that. Even an old grill. You guys, I could tell stories about buying and selling until the cows come home. We bought a really old but really heavy grill. We actually got it. This is one we got for free. Well, there's someone giving away, if someone in a really high-end neighborhood giving away a really, really nice grill. And we had a really, really cheap grill that was broken. <laughs> and so we really wanted this gas grill. And they were like, well, the, the grates are broken and you know, I need to replace those. But if you can come get it, you can have it for free. It was super heavy. I think it was like 300 pounds or something. And it was kind of a beast to get in and out of the truck and home. But we went to a local store. We bought the new grates for it. They had this like ceramic cooking plates. It was like this big, like grill that had, I don't know, it was huge and super heavy and it had double burners and it was double racks and stuff. We just had to replace the parts inside and they just didn't feel like dealing with it. They just bought a new one, had it delivered and said, here's free, come get it. So I think we spent $65 or something on the grates that came into it. And for us, we had a brand new grill with a little bit of elbow grease and two new parts for this thing. We had a thousand dollar grill for $65. So again, trash and treasure. Don't ever write yourself off as no one's going to buy that. You'd be super surprised if what people will buy and when and how. So big bulky items, things like that. Um, those, those marketplaces, anything brand new in the box, your, your inventory, your kit kits, gift sets, all those things, sell those on Amazon. Amazon's the best place mostly for brand new oh, boxes, items with UPCs, anything like that. Brand new, Amazon. eBay and Etsy are the best places for vintage items, used items specifically for eBay. eBay, <laughs> I have sold half bottles of perfume that have been discontinued. Literally half a bottle of perfume that's half gone, that's about 15 years old. And yet someone wants that because it's discontinued. I mean, the sky is the limit. Do not just check always check to see what your things are. Etsy is, is a great place for custom items and very vintage. It's the, the vintage is really, really going strong on e uh, Etsy right now. Poshmark, of course, is for clothing and shoes and accessories and more. They're adding things. Um, I don't personally have experience selling on Poshmark yet. Um, it's not really my niche or my thing, but lots and lots of people do really well with clothing. If you're in a clothing area and you have lots of thrift stores, perfect time people are bringing stuff in and all that. So 
Uh, Mercari. Mercari is extremely easy to get started and sell on Mercari. They sell a lot of different things there. I mean, it's like eBay's little sister kind of thing. I mean, it's got everything and it's really pretty simple and straightforward. Their fees are 10% straight off the board, 10% all the time. Um, so it's really easy to calculate how much your fees are going to be. You know, something's $50, your fee's five bucks. It just is. And then you, the shipping's a little bit not complicated, but annoying, I guess I would say. Um, but Mercari is another way to sell those things. I literally sold a lipstick that I used one time and it was a terrible color. And I was like, this is literally brand new except for one use and it was a bad color for me. And literally someone bought it for full price as they would in a store. So just, you'll, you'd never know. So all of these things, just to tell you, to number one, don't block yourself in with some of these assumptions. Don't assume people aren't going to buy things if they're used or a little bit more less than what you would. You are not your customer. You don't have to be your customer. There's a lot of people out there that sell super luxurious items and they're like the most plain and simple generic people in the world. So you just don't know. Don't make assumptions. Just do the research. And so all of these things, let's go over them quickly one more time, things and what to sell during a recession and re recession proofing your business. Camping gear, outdoor gear, fishing gear, sporting goods, and supplies. Don't forget the accessories to all these things. Thinking about secondhand and local markets like Facebook Marketplace. Auto parts and auto accessories, things to repair and upkeep and preserve what you have. People are trying to preserve what they have already. Home improvements, home decor, parts, accessories, supplies, things for fixing appliances rather than replacing them, hobby items, Things that save money, like do-it-yourself supplies and kits, storage items, small appliances, and again, those generic things that we all kind of forget until we need to buy them. Um, so if you have any more questions about any of these platforms, how to sell, what to sell in different places, go make sure you go to the Mommy Income Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join. Here's your code word, recession proof. And I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear what you've sold in a recession or any ideas you have. Come to the Facebook group and use the hashtag recession proof and talk about, you know, share a story. I'd love to hear some of that. I mean, literally I was watching something the other day about someone selling, I mean, I've sold a lot of underwear on eBay. It was one of my niches for a while because I just realized it was such a hot thing to be able to, <laughs> no pun intended there, <laughs> but it was such a, uh, something, a hot seller. A lot of people were buying a lot of vintage underwear. Um, I was finding at estate sales and it was great. And, and I saw somebody's even selling them used. I was trying to look for things that were new with tags, but you know, like Oscar de la Renta, um, nighty from 1982 sold for over a hundred dollars it was five bucks at a, at a yard sale so these are just things to think about during these times diversify change your mindset as far as what people are buying people are reducing spending but they're not cutting it out so Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Again, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that if you're subscribing on YouTube or on the podcast, I would love a review. I would just love for you to say, this is a great podcast and I love to listen to it. Um, even if you have a bad review, I suppose you could leave that too, but I would love for you guys to leave a five-star review on iTunes. There's directions to do that. If you go to mommyincome.com slash podcast, there's a directions on ways to even leave a review if you don't know how. So I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon files. Have a great week, everyone.